Okay, wow. Audio check. Shit, we're recording. What? We're recording? Yeah. I'm oh, just um, Tack, or Mac, we're recording. Mac, we're recording. Well, I'm just admiring Mason's spell. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, Ashley, you want to do the intro this time? You're doing pretty well. Oh, because we Mac was doing it the other time, wasn't it? Okay, well, uh, hey, guys. Welcome to the uh, 15th episode of the Panther Folding Table Talk. Panther Airsoft. Air, sorry, Panther Man. Airsoft. Man, okay, you screwed so up. Or, uh, you okay, you know what? I, I guess oh, I lost my chance. you guys. <laughs> Welcome back to the Panther Airsoft Folding Table Talk, episode 15. Today, we're talking about belts. Belts, hold up your pants. They are important. We're going to talk about them. Pants, you need them. They're recommended. Are you, are you trying to sell your store right now? No. If you need pants, you can get them. I have belts. Um, okay. <laughs> but yeah, guys, welcome back right to another episode. Uh, this time, yeah, we're going to break down, uh, you know, just uh, battle belts, duty belts, first line belts. A lot of people have a lot of different names for them. But, but first, but first, we got. But first. Before, before we get into the meat of the topic. I get, yeah, before yeah. I get carried away. We got away, some updates boy, for you guys. Obviously, thank you. Hold on. You got to do your intro first with, with us. Yeah. Remember, oh, your... I feel like they know who we are by now. But what about the other people who don't know who we are? Okay. You know? Well, if they don't. Hey, guys. I'm Mac. That's Tac. Hey, guys. And then we got our main man, Poi, over there. What up? And, uh, yeah, guys, welcome back, and or welcome to an episode of the Panther Airsoft Folding Table Talk, where we like to discuss things uh, airsoft-related and uh, field-related to our wonderful home that we call Panther Airsoft. Oh, yeah. Make and ourselves feel like we're important. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I do apologize. Uh, last week, we did had to, we had, it was a long weekend, we so we did break. We took a break. We took yeah. a break. Nothing wrong with that. Well, yeah. felt like how was, how was our break? I had a good, good time. I didn't stop working. I, I, in I the not, sense that, like, I always had something to do. I do not. I, I think we got to remind our viewers that this is what we're doing part time, and as well as like off time. Well, we're, we're like, yeah, we're filming this at. This was supposed to be seven, fun, right? Seven o'clock at night. During I'm gonna the, ask you guys again. So, how is the fame taking up now? What fame? <laughs> <laughs> You guys are getting good at this, honestly. <laughs> There's no fame. There man. ain't no fame to this. No. Oh, yeah, there fame, is. You guys are famous. No. You, guys, you guys are well-known no. at the field. Well, I mean, that's great because I really do want to be able to impact the field in the way that I see. So, you know, for people to be able to have uh, a level of comfort, being able to come talk to me and uh, come discuss whatever they're talking or whatever they're thinking. A lot. I've had a few people Mac, discuss. you're giving them too much credit. Let's be real. They still don't even know which one's which yet, okay? That is true. We still yeah. confuse you. Okay, well, it's all right. Mac wears glasses sometimes. Sorry, Ta I mean, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Talk about last week's episode. Guys, if you haven't checked out last week's episode, or, sorry. Last, last week. Last, last week's. Yeah, if so you guys haven't checked out our last episode... Make sure you check that out. That was us discussing uh, Mil Sims with scenario our guests, uh, scenario Julian type and games there. Yeah, especially with our special guests Julian and Malcolm from uh, both from Team Rice and the other Division B and Division, Division B, B yeah. and uh, also representing uh, Airsoft Strike Group. So yeah, ASG. yeah, they did they did a name yeah, change they, they last week. Yes, so yeah, if ASG anyone, yes. is now known as Airsoft, Airsoft Strike Group, yeah, not Airsoft. Airsoft Gear Group. Yes. Not not anymore. No, yes. it's good. Yes. I like it. I, I like it. The, I like the logo change too. That was good. Cool. Yeah, no, like it's it. good. It's good. Yeah. And they're gonna be opening up shop soon. I hope. Yeah, so. well, big things. Yeah, for I them. think they're about eighty percent done. You know, I, I yeah, I'd say eighty percent. Yeah, the progress has been coming along there. I'm really happy for them, and uh, I'm yeah. excited to see what they're gonna bring. You exactly. Know? Competition. <laughs> <laughs> It's Absolutely not. We've already drawn the lines in the sand, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the point. Wow. Uh, um, just a reminder, um, at the field, um, there is still, like, a little bit of a haze out there. No, it's um, smoky. Yeah, thanks to our American neighbors. Uh, you don't you know, need to sugarcoat it. It's Hong Kong out there, guys. There you go. So, what is it? Parts per milli? Parts per million. Um, it's we, pretty high. It's, it's pretty high. Uh, we're, we're number, number one. one. We're number I, one we're in the world. Number one. We're still I number believe, one in the yeah. world right now. Yeah. It's hard to breathe. <laughs> is basically what you're trying to say. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. was so, going to add to that, but okay. like, I don't want to well, make any sorry, mask sorry jokes. Sorry for making jokes. Back to the serious part. <laughs> Guys, 
if you have any kind of respiratory issues or anything like that, right now is definitely not a time for you to come out to the field and exert yourself. Yeah. If you already um, had trouble running, running with stuff in the air is already going to make it ten times worse. Don't give the people that were making excuses for fitness. I'm talking to the people with respiratory issues. He, the man's got a point. He's got a point, but like even the guys with fitness, it's even worse for them. That, that's a work on your fitness. <laughs> All right, but yeah, so obviously it's a smoky devil outside. Uh, it really sucks, but uh, obviously <laughs> we care more about your health, dude. Yeah, yeah. Mother Nature is doing her part, and uh, yeah, yeah, go exactly. play some armor or squad or something for the week. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, communicate Stay with your team. Yeah. yeah, practice communication. Yeah, Stay indoors. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, other than that, fill out your waivers for anyone that is coming out to join us this weekend. I know it's going to be a little cooler. Uh, there's some cold front moving in or something, so mm -hmm. there's supposed to be a little bit of rain. So definitely. Bring so with that, that would mean some kit change, obviously, you know. Bring some wet weather gear, maybe yeah. a change of clothes, change it, of It socks. is typical, you know, coming up to summer to fall weather. So, mm -hmm. yeah, bring in some warmer gear now. Mm -hmm. uh, ponchos available at the armory. Um, Ooh. I do have ponchos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and jackets. Uh, <laughs> let's not get into that. Um, but, yeah, so obviously we touched on last uh uh, our last episode there that was good uh what about field stuff we've had some stuff going on some st stuff uh, stirring around in the field oh yes oh we yes so news. we might as well jump into this yeah, um exactly it's, uh, so you probably have noticed that i've been hanging out um over there at the shooting range mm -hmm. uh, last weekend with uh with a bunch of group so that group is um like all wearing black um they are the film group that practices uh, they're like stunt people, right? So mm -hmm. they practice all kinds of crazy, like you know, stunt moves and stuff at Panther, and they train frontline artists. Yes, they're, yeah, they're, they are the, the frontline talent, is they're, what they call themselves, the and uh, they basically specialize in um, making sure that the guys that are going into film are, you know, like not sort of military, they like sort of like they know what that, they're doing in terms like of military tactics. They got a basic Elite? understanding of weapon yeah. handling. Weapons you know, you, you know how you um, complain about like having stuff backwards? Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> like for instance, like sights uh, backwards on yeah, a gun? Yeah, yeah no, yeah, they, yeah. they know which direction it the goes. The EOTech goes this way, right? Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, and how to hold a gun properly, how mm. to actually put on attachments. So when I look down the iron sight, I use my non-dominant eye not looking down the iron hole. You mean close the under... Exactly, exactly. <laughs> or when they go, like, full auto and the dust catches on. <laughs> oh, you're talking about Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> so, in any cases, they are training um, to hone their skills so that they know what they're doing at, you know, at a film set. Yeah. Mm. To make them right. look better on so, film so that we don't get triggered. Yeah. And then on top of that, we have also, not a special guest anymore, he is going to be a recurring guests here at panther we mm -hmm. have uh jeff de groot de groot mm -hmm. he is i know a lot of people have seen it in our uh, facebook right now um he's offering a free training on the weekend like for the next is it this saturday which is already booked don't try to book in right he only allows it's 16 already, people yeah it's, it's already, already booked. been booked next week is probably going to be booked as well mm -hmm. by the time this release so mm -hmm. Mind you guys, um, attendees are welcome. So if you are coming out for a day of Airsoft, um, you guys are more than welcome to sit and watch what's going on. You won't be able to participate, unfortunately. Yeah. You can maybe get in on the next one, but it is open for everyone to observe. So who is Jeff? He is basically JTF2, and he is... He's a sniper, basically, a JTF2. That's what he said. That's the only info I got out of him. Um, I won't we, dive. We're, we're, allowed, we're to allowed to, but I won't dive any 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 further into details. Um, but he is going to be offering what we call a sampler right now, or a teaser, because in like a month or so, he will be offering full courses here at Panther exclusively, with um, as long as you pay in to his fees. I don't know what the fees are yet, but uh, it's not going to be cheap. I guarantee you. Because, A, everybody loves it that, you know, you are, like, right up here. <laughs> for well, like, it's a real a, tier yeah, one. Yeah, that's a real tier one yeah, operator. You're going to get down to the brass tacks of it, guys. You guys are going to be learning from someone who had real-world experience that went out into some real ugly. shitty, real b ugly environments. And he's willing to, you know, dumb it down to a degree for you guys to maybe use, you know, for fun on the weekend. So... The opportunity is huge. Um, you'll get to learn it, you know, the right way. 
And, uh, you know, I guess the bonus is you can look cool doing it. And he's an all-around nice guy. Yeah, let's not forget that. I really, really do enjoy talking to Jeff. Jeff, if you ever hear this, we do appreciate you. Thank you. (laughs) I see see him coming over here and having a talk. Maybe one day. One day. One day. One when, day. when we're wordy. We'll, we'll we're just after. We're just airsofters, guys. Let's <laughs> yeah. be honest here. Oh, and also a good reminder, if you are joining in for his sessions, his teaser sessions, please mind that you have to pay the Panther Day, Panther Airsoft Day fee to yeah, get in admission here. Fee to get so the, the admission fee is yeah. basically your way of getting into his class as well. Mm, exactly. And we will be checking because there's only 16 of you. Mm-hmm. 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 All so right. That includes attendees too, right? Yes, yes. That, that includes attendees. So if you're coming to watch, you have to have paid for admission because you have to be at Panther for the day. Yeah, exactly. I feel like the train conductor guy coming in and be like stamping everyone's ticket. I'm just going to ask for wristbands, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll be there. Wristbands. Where is your wristbands? <laughs> and you know what we'll have? Battle belts. That is another oh good my, segue. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, there we go. Right, should we just dive right into it? Yeah, yeah, okay. let's do it. All right. So okay. obviously. So back to the meat of the topic. Yeah, go for we'll, it. Go for it. So obviously, guys, uh, we came up to the, uh, you know, kind of like the topic of this episode here was kind of coming down to breaking down some uh, some of the nitpicky parts of gear and everything like that. And we thought uh, like a great place for us to start um, is uh, <coughs> belt setups. Your first line. First line. I like to call no, okay, it first line. That's what I you like know to what? Call I'm it. sorry, guys. For, for, I call it a battle belt, and that's the first time I've ever heard that. Your first line of defense. No. It's the first thing on you. When right, you, but when I've you also up. got an AR. Yeah. Well, most of the time, right? So, like, I mean, so for me, you it's do, a I, secondary thing. So, 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 like, this is what I'm saying. There's many different ways <laughs> of calling it, guys. Okay, don't kill me. All right? Just I'm, I'm not killing you. I'm just wondering, like... I'm just shocked that you guys are fighting me on this right now because I'm trying to get a point across. Let's get the chair. Guys, like, Let's get the chair. We'll throw on a chair now. Yeah. We need a chair. And it is a chair. But, yeah, you know, obviously, guys... A lot of people have different ways of setting up belts and everything mm-hmm. like that. And well, it clearly it, yeah. seems from what you guys are giving me right now, bad vibes, uh, <laughs> you guys are going to be running it a different way from where I'm running it, right? So I think everybody does. That's, exactly. that's the beauty believe, of, of the battle yeah. belt yeah. Uh, or the first line belt yeah. is you customize it to mm-hmm. your own. And that's the beauty. Like, exactly. you know how you get a chest rig. You, cust- you customize it enough that it's... It's on you, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Same with the first line or the uh, battle belts. Well, exactly. You, you have to add different. attachments. Yeah. yeah. Like, I definitely, like, you, you'll see a lot of the same in a lot of places. You know, popularity and trends are there, you know. Um, talking about Lucas, you know, out there and stuff like that. Uh, other guys, you know, who are watching, like, uh, um, what's his name? Uh, Liku? Uh, well, yeah, Liku for Are you talking real steel or are you talking well, it airsoft? It transfers for both because, like, guys are going to be practicing their mechanics, and that's usually where the belt kind of comes into line. You know, like, I see a lot of guys who are doing mechan- like, practicing their drills and stuff like that. You mean nomenclature for, like, reloads? Yeah, exactly. And as well as dumping? Yeah. And I, as well as... I, picking up your gun yeah. from from your side, right? Exactly. Everything's possible from the belt, right? You yeah. don't you don't need to be wearing a plate carrier to you know to have that on you, right? And I mean, so that's one of the advantages of having a belt set up, right? So that it makes it more of like an everyday you, person. You've seen people carry it with plate carriers as well. Of course, of course. So it, it like complements to your loadout. Plate yeah. carriers well, are like yeah, common my, with using it. Exactly, right? myself included, right? Like, I mean, that's why I was saying like. Um, so I understand your guys' wording on it. Yeah. And um, like you're saying, I, so like, you know, if you break it down in that sense, like if you were to have a malfunction on your primary setup, right? So your primary platform being like a, a long gun or something like that, and then your first response would be to go to your belt, right? Then I understand that wording behind it. Yeah, that, that's right? first line right no, no, there. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So I get that setup. Uh, when you're talking about kind of going down minimalist, right? And, you know, you're, you're not needing to rock all that upper body stuff anymore, and you can kind of like dumb it down to a belt setup where you kind of only have to have the few essential things get that you know like yeah there's a lot of different ways to play from it right but it all stems from a belt yeah okay let's see what you dropped there one second here oh man that wasn't there 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 is your base there there is your base belt right there you're saying like your entire build is sort of based off of you want to be your hand model there just just show it off (laughs) running it from the belt is that is that what you're saying mac not really i'm just saying like Obviously, this is something that you know. You so that's st- pretty basic. Is yeah, what you're this saying. is basically this is so this is the shadow strategic tactical belt. It's like you know it's your standard 
like uh, BDU belt. This is either going to fit through your BDU, like your standard pants or anything like that, or you can run it over top. Um, you can run easily off of this. So that is not considered a battle belt at that point. That is more just a belt. It's just a belt, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's your baseline, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's like a tactical belt. It's got, uh, obviously, it comes attached with two utility pouches there that you could either use for mags or a uh, utility knife or any uh, number of other things so you can jam in there or anything like that. Um, and like I said, yeah, this is something that you can start uh, your belt set up from. Right, this is something that you could uh, eventually pair up with an H harness if you were to get the the full battle belt set up, or if you wanted to get the webbing for it. Um, if you wanted to run a simple paddle off of this for like a hip holster or something like that, you know, maybe a one or two extra pouches or a single dump pouch or something like that. You know, these are these are the kinds of things that you're going to start off with, and uh, they're the very uh, basics, but obviously um, gear being uh, something that's ever changing. You know, this is something that can evolve into so many different things, yeah. which we have examples of. Yeah. So, yeah, this one, very basic. Yeah. Very basic. It is well, not something you want by default. <laughs> well, essentially, this is this style of belt is something that you're going to see, like, your regular average Joe on the weekend wielding. It's not very customized. It's very basic in the fact that it can hold two mags or you can hold a flashlight or you can hold a tack snack or something like that, your speed loader in the sense of airsoft and whatnot. So, it, yeah, it's a very basic belt, right? Mm -hmm. And from there, you can do a lot of other things, right? Like with the benefit of molly webbing, you can set it up to where you could actually thread stuff through your oh, belt. Oh, hello, Elliot. Hi, welcome to Panda. Today I'm welcome to Panda. Tack. Tack is talking about molly. Hello there. And today with molly, molly stuff. <laughs> We're talking about belts and how they're important to keep up your pants because because we need pants at Pants off crack. What? Pants oh, oh. off crack. Oh, God okay. Damn it, All right. <laughs> you know that moment when you see someone's ass crack as they're running through the field and their pants falling down. You're like, hey, I didn't want to see that, but you saw it, and you can't really see it. So what you're saying is they need a belt. Everybody needs a belt. If you don't have a belt, what are you doing? You should probably wear a belt. Yeah. Even Laura wears a belt. I do wear a belt. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you guys can hear Laura and Elliot here, but they are in the show right now. But they're in video, so. Invasion. <laughs> Anyways. Invasions. Invasions. You guys ever see Independence Day? That was a good invasion. Which one? They were both failed. The first one. The second one failed too. The second one was a cop out. Well, the second one was an epic fail. We just, the, the second one is too much for cop out, just like Star Wars, where they're like, hey, we'll build a bigger Death Star for the next trilogy. Yeah, that didn't but we'll work. Make it, that, it didn't work the first that, time. That didn't work huh. out And then we'll have it destroy planets from the other side of the galaxy. We just needed and the a light female Luke really Skywalker. Fast. Are we allowed to talk about Star Wars? Not really. <laughs> 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 anyway, shall we resume? Yes, no. please. All right. So, so from the uh, basic belt setup, uh, I think, the, um, what would we belt. say the, ne ne the next runner up would be? I don't know. You tell me. Well, from your opinion, like what? what so would you we, add to that I just belt? control the belts, man. You're shitting on the belts. So tell me what's okay. You so want, let, let's see a battle belt. One, let's see a battle belt. Which, belt. The next, which the next one is? Tack is the next. Is the next belt. So that that there has a battle belt loop on it. Is. Okay, so from a regular belt, we're going right to the battle belt then. Yeah. Okay, so on this Molly battle belt, it obviously has a little more real estate on it and whatnot. It also has the loops on the top, which make it accessible to be added on as a harness. Um, with the extra real estate on there, you can obviously molly on a lot more things. Okay, let me switch that. There you go. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, so let's let's see it. Um, buckle it up. That's a nice belt. <laughs> So whose belt is this? This one's mine. I yeah. have it just basically set up just because I, I, I don't often wear my belt just because, um, you know, I don't really play very often. You but your own belt? Yeah. No <laughs> What's your favorite thing to put in your belt? Just mags. What's your favorite candy to put in a belt? Rockets. What the hell is wrong with you? It's Skittles. That's the only right answer. No way. Rockets all the way. No, no Skittles. Then it r rattles around like me. No, I don't want to taste the rainbow. No, your, your belt's <laughs> tasting the rainbow. You're just transporting the rainbow. 
talking about nerds because those make the biggest mess. Yeah, are we talking about that, the, the food still or the, yeah, the, the clientele? Candies. This raid has been brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> Anyways, continue on, Tack. Oh, well, just saying, um, continue, continue, continuing on with the setup, I just rock a Grip Tack uh, Kydex style retention uh, pistol. Elliot, I hate you. <laughs> like, so much. Oh, my God. You're never gonna see this. I hope but I hate you. I hope they hurt. I love you, but I hate you. I heard. I hope the audience can hear them because oh the mic God, wasn't even was, picking up a lot of stuff. That was, such, that was such a headache right there. Okay, so moving on. Yes, I'm sorry, Tack. Your battle belt setup. <laughs> Resume. Unpause. <laughs> Are you gonna talk over again? No, no. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it going here, and then you keep like. We're gonna talk. I'm we're sorry gonna... that was really cringy, but we got to keep moving forward. Okay, well, we have we don't have all night, right? Okay, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, so let's. You got a lot of notes. No. He's looking at your thing. Is it? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let's start. I guess let's start off with reintroducing the belt again then. Okay, I don't know how you want to lead up to it then. So, um, what do what do we what do what do we what do we have for the next belt? What do you want me to show? Um, what's what's up next? We have belt number three. Okay, we'll show Big Daddy's belt. Uh, it's my belt. <laughs> oh my god, this is a big belt. Yeah, it's also heavy. Yes. So that's like a mix of a belt system and a battle belt. Mm -hmm. um, bring it over a bit. Yeah. Let's spin it around. There you go. So I just have a med pack at the back, mm -hmm. dump pouch, and then... Two mags each. Okay, so I guess the first difference that I see with yours versus mine is that you have your uh, pistols uh, pouches uh, behind your mag pouches. Can I just ask uh, why yours is set up that way? Because I'm used to reloading it from all the way to the back. Okay, so your range of motion for My range of motion is, is using an AR. Okay. So, like, I practice with AR mags close to my front. Okay, so, you, okay, so you're practicing AR reloads a lot closer. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys... Have I, your... I do it the opposite, where I'm. I have my pistol a lot closer, just like set up a lot closer to my front, while I keep my sides more open and access to my AR platform and whatnot. What about you, Tuck or Mac? <laughs> Damn it! God, even on the podcast. Uh, well, no, like exactly like Tuck said, I'm uh, I'm pretty similar, and I mean, I feel like that's like kind of like a really like popular trend right now that I'm seeing yeah. is like you know it's it's kind of I don't want to say standardized because I mean. Unless it's a military doctrine somewhere that it is standardized. I don't know. Maybe someone can let me know. But um, what I do see prevailing throughout the, you know, I guess kind of real steel slash airsoft community as well is just um, you've got your, your pistol pouches as your first closest reload. And then uh, a lot of people put either a fast mag or, you know, some kind of uh, five, five, some kind of AR mag on the, on the hip on like a 90, you know, so that that's, so they have two, both options, right? Uh, very quickly accessible. Yeah. I think like for my logic is your pistol is always a backup. Mm -hmm. So you, those mags are always going to be my backup mm -hmm. regardless. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not going to speed reload a pistol because mm -hmm. my, a I'm more effective with an AR. So I want that to be topped up. Mm -hmm like instantaneously mm -hmm. rather than fiddling around with trying to figure out where the mag is mm. behind me. It's right in front of me. Mm -hmm. Right. So you can see there on the setup there. If you just rotate it, I got some really, really awkward belt setup, which is just basically um, right there. It's just a buckle system. Um, if you look at the logo, it's literally Milsig. That's <laughs> a blast from the past. Blast from the past. <laughs> oh my God. But uh, yeah. Um, and then there's my shot timer right there. Um, you know, for just practicing your drills practicing. and, and then okay. I do have a radio pouch there but I hardly use it so. so so you keep your radio on your belt yeah see I would keep that on my back 
Yeah, somewhere. no, I or, or on my uh, on like a well, I, I definitely depending see on what your... system I'm using, right? Because I usually accompany my belt with um, my my load bearing equipment. That's yeah, and bearing. also like check out the weight on that thing. No, I, boy, I lifted it up. Okay, I like. Do you want me? To, like, well, you're, you're just, also. Do you want people to see me yeah. struggle you're, or something? You're also, like, yes, this uh, is a heavy GBB belt. guy. So <laughs> looking at that, that is quite a heavy setup. On yeah, the, those. No, are, we're missing the point see, here. I'm thick. Are, <laughs> oh, that's where you're trying to get us to. Yeah. That thing will not fall off of me because it, I'm just big, guys. Well, good, well, you do have so, a and, nice, and you can see how much real estate you get out of it, right? Like, you you got that, hips, boy. Yeah. yeah. You got hips. Your yeah. hips don't lie. So that's where I get the free, like, the extra real estate. Uh, not the free real estate. The extra real estate, right, just it to carry. Free. Well, that, that airsoft free. meme isn't a lie. The big fat guy does have a lot more real estate than the skinny guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. No. 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 That means a b- bigger frame and everything. So that so. that that's all kinds of strange arrangement. Not strange, but like all the attachments there. Um, if you just rotate it around, like. Oh yeah. Well, I love your belt setup. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, again, my my only quibble to you that I like because I love the way that you have it set up is I would ditch the radio pouch and I would switch your AR and pistol mags around. That's the, yeah. That's, no, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. That's that's well. Just from my view of it, I like it just because you have it set up to where you can run either a plate carrier, complement it with your belt, or you can run your belt and complement it with something else, or even just run the belt by itself. Yeah. By having the radio pouch there, it allows you to still have communication um, while running. This setup is probably a good eight years old now, so yeah, I haven't yeah. reconfigured it in the last. I would say the last configuration was. The shot timer, a year ago was uh, with the, the with the, the pistol, new, the new pistol. Uh, well, your newest addition is obviously the shot timer. The shot timer. Let's see the shot timer again. Uh, bring it forward. Yeah, the shot timer. Um, yeah, For, if you guys ever wonder what shot timer it is, it is uh, a, a, like a custom shot timer. Um, come to me and ask me what it is, but I keep forgetting what the brand is. So it says command. Yeah. For anyone curious for airsoft specific, those ones work great just because you're able to physically adjust the sensitivity on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Which is great. Anyways, let's move on because I don't okay. want to talk about my, my yeah, thickness okay, to well, it. Let's, so, so. let's, let's, let's see some real practical use. Uh, okay, where's, so where's, where's Mason's br- yeah, there? Let's bring up a, uh, so, <laughs> So this is a real minimalist style. This is, this is like showing off bikinis, yeah. really. Well, Because uh, like, like, Mason. Let's be real here. Um, Mason's a brand boy, so he's all about, you know, the brands and stuff like that. So knowing him, he's rocking the uh, Ferro Concepts belt here. Uh, super minimalist. Um, I really like the way this is set up. Um, I like the uh, setup that he's got. Uh, it's really minimalistic compared to mine, considering the fact that you barely have any real estate. He's not using very much real estate, no. and he's only carrying one of each. Yeah, and the only the only complaint I would say is like I I would put a dump pouch on it. I'm uh, so that definitely like from my perspective, um, just coming, I guess just from like uh, I hate carrying all that extra weight kind of thing, right? Yeah, like, that's true. Yeah. I mean, he would. From, yeah. from like a like an, a weekend warrior airsoft skirmish point of view, like I don't rock the dump mag. Now, obviously, if you were in like a real world situation where you don't want to throw away that stuff, yeah, you would have a dump mag somewhere on, or dump pouch on you somewhere. But like, yeah, on, as a weekend warrior setup, I don't tend to unless you're the type of person to lose your mag a lot, which there's quite a few. So he does. There. I know he does complement this with a plate carrier. Yes, actually, um, no. Uh, what he usually runs and like I was saying, he runs really minimalistic. So he's usually rocking like the spiritist chest rig. So oh, he's so there's, there's not even a plate. It's just it's, it's just it's a rig. Just, it's it's like you just said, a it's a bikini. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's a, no, it's this is like bikini. comparing like. <laughs> It's 100%. It's 100%. That's the best way to say it. This is the equivalent of a male two piece. Yes. This is the battle belt and chest rig. Yeah, the battle belt and chest rig. Yeah. Summer's out. <laughs> chest rig. Like, yeah. what up? And it's time to bring out the CPCs. Yeah. <laughs> Women, if you want to know what men Haley talk about, strategic? this is the fashion we talk about. Jesus. Did somebody say Haley strategic? <laughs> but um, all right, let's check it out. Um, let's. Uh, can you rip out the inner belt um, just to show people what how, how it actually sets up? So with Mason's setup uh, for the Spiritus rig here, there is a... Uh, feral, oh, feral, feral, uh, yeah, yeah. This is a Feral Concept. Feral Concept. There is an inner belt that yeah. he puts into his uh, belt loops, right? Yes. yes. And then from there, he then buckles that one up and, and, and then puts on the, the, yeah, the rig, course. right? So this one would basically go through your pants. Yeah, and uh, you would be able to hook that up, and uh, you know, use it to hold up your pants, bands, 
Very important. And then these can be taken on and off, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so it's essentially. So he can can run with this easily without falling off. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I, you know, I I don't see this uh, belt often, but the more I see it in front of my face, uh, it's a nice more, belt. yeah, it's a really nice belt. It's a nice I, belt. Yeah. I just I don't know if I can rock it. I don't think it has enough room for me. No, it's not definitely not enough room for me. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy too. Yeah. I'm willing to try it. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got a. Uh, you could go back there and try it out. <laughs> well, I really like you shopping the, like, for something new, <laughs> like the Orion style belts or something like that. Like I've got like a, like uh, so for my belt setup, I've got like a cheap Condor belt or something like. Let's that. Let's see it. Let's oh, see yeah. it. Yeah. yeah so. so thank you, Mason, for uh, letting us use that. Exactly. Yeah, it's a great. Yeah. Setup. It's a lovely setup, but not 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 for everybody, I guess. So this is. So this is my setup. All right. Let's bring it in there. Yeah, you're good. So, well, of course, the shot timer. Well, oh, I just had to show that off. I'll take that away. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's part of it. Put it back. Well, so, yeah, that's a mine. That is for pure looks. Yep. Pure looks. <laughs> so let's do a rotation here. What do we see here? We got, we got your, you got spare mags in front of you. You got your pistol. You got your rear utility pot. You got two of them. It's got a pretty loaded belt. Yeah, that's a pretty lo- It's like more loaded than mine. To be honest. Honestly. I feel like this is the lightest I've ever ran my belt. Really? Yeah, because I used to have like the H harness style uh, full battle belt with all the Molly real estate and everything like that. And I, 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 don't, I didn't know what I thought or, you know, I, I did know. It's just like I thought more was better. And I had... You know, I think I was carrying something like six mags on my hip. I had my giant dump pouch. I had uh, a big horizontal utility pouch. I had uh, 40 millimeter grenade pouches. Then I had a drop leg pouch. You're all, you're all over the place. Yeah, exactly. So, like, you know, like, like it's taken me a really... L- <sighs> yeah, it's, it's probably taken me about maybe three to four years now since, like, my airsoft journey started to kind of, like hone in on this belt setup and mind you um so i have had some changes to this but it's literally i think the addition of two pouches or uh it's it's three changes and that has happened over the last two years so that's like other than that this belt setup has has stayed the same it's all it's all condor right let's let's Uh, take a look here yeah so i've got uh i've got like the god i can't remember the name of it but it's pretty similar to what you're talking about with um with that i've got an inner belt as well yeah so this is uh you know you got your padded rubber and everything like that to make sure that it uh doesn't slide around on your clothing and or your hips and everything like that yeah if you compare it to mine like my my padded area is huge yeah exactly it's so, like five rows of molly yeah so i've got uh i've got two rows of molly on this whole belt that goes around and everything like that so what i've loaded it up on um as you guys can kind of like see so there there's the uh there's the rear if you want to show people your your ar um yeah there oh yeah so So you got your ar mags there at the back and then you got your two at the front and you also have two um pistol mags on the uh, close to your pistol as well correct yeah so, so you're, you're you're rocking almost five mags for pistol then yeah uh, so yeah so I'll, I'll i'll have one in in the gun and i'll have four backups and everything like that and that primarily comes down to the fact that i really do uh i enjoy transitioning to my to my pistol and stuff like that and a lot of the times it'll come down to me kind of giving myself a challenge um when it comes to airsoft specifically just because um you know say we're playing a game and you know it's starting to kind of get like a steamroll effect or something like that so i'll put the polar star down and uh <laughs> and let them and let them come right so so, uh, so is there a uh, a tank pouch for this one uh not at all what oh, this is a gas blow back no this is a vfc no i mean 17. you're He's got one. He just doesn't have it set up on his belt, guys. Oh, so oh. You, you carry a backpack then instead of putting it on no, your so, waist. Uh, so my... Because uh, I was about to question, like, most people with the dump pouch will just dump their tank on their dump pouch. No, actually, this is my roll-up uh, or my zip-up minimalist dump pouch. It's is that what it is? Really, yeah, it's actually Let's really see. Here, nice. here, here. Let's... So, show it to everybody there. Yeah, so it's... So, really I, nice. I thought it was a, uh, a utility bag. Yeah, so that's what I have right here. So, this is my small utility yep. pouch that I actually... Uh, I'll carry a couple grenades in and stuff. Gotcha. Like that. And then what's the other one there um, then? So this is my zip up, uh, zip up dump pouch. Uh, it's got a quick release. Dude, take a dump right now. Let's see. Yeah. 
opens up. It's got a nice little retention uh, elastic at the top yeah. and everything like that, so you can make sure you secure your mags. But, uh, yeah, so this is made of ripstop nylon. Um, I have shoved up to 14 mags into this thing. Um, my butt was very big that game. But, uh, yeah, 14 mags. It fit. It was great. And then, again, when you're done, it uh, just zips up to this nice little uh, little cute pouch on your belt. And yeah. Yeah, some people mistake it for a utility pouch, and it's okay because it's like, yo, this is just uh, my small pouch. I've got uh, two uh, Kydex uh, quick draw uh, M4 mags, mags yeah. and then I've got... This one over here is a Kydex um, pistol pouch. I've got a double there. And then I've got my my, Your knife. my, my rubber knife, uh, which we're not allowed to use right now. So it's literally there just for looks. For sure. Yep. Just like your shot timer. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm saying my draw time is getting very good, okay? Uh, this is a real steel pack timer. So uh, obviously it works with real steel. I could alter the sensitivity to work with Airsoft, but there is a pretty big warning on the instruction box that says if you screw around with the sensitivity you could permanently screw around with it so i really would like to use this for real steel so i'm going to not screw with the sensitivity that's why you're borrowing mine yeah, <laughs> yeah. when i wanted to uh, when i wanted yeah, to see yeah. what the numbers were right because the real numbers well, are because i'd like worked on my draw for a yeah. long time so i wanted to see if i'd gotten better uh so yeah like poi was mentioning again though i've got another two pistol mags uh, over here just that's because interesting of, yeah yeah i really so you, like, you rely on your secondary a lot more than i do um yeah because i just uh so if i go inside a building or anything like that or I get into an engagement distance where I'm going to be engaging someone any closer than 30 feet or 20 feet I'll pull out my pistol gotcha yeah just because um I enjoy it more you know like I I do enjoy maneuvering around and everything like that and um uh I practice my transition drills like crazy so like why not right come on guys <laughs> um but uh yeah so that's that uh, then, how long uh, have you had this set up for now uh so i've rocked this belt now for probably i want to say over a year maybe almost a year and a half and then um my m4 pouches have always been there my uh pistol pouches have always been there um my dump pouch has changed from a like a, from the same large roll up dump pouch that you've got, and then I changed my utility pouch where I used to have a big horizontal bulky one, and uh, so I've kind of like gone down, and I'm still gonna kind of trim the fat off of this because yeah, it's kind of loaded up for a minimalist belt, but um, you know each each thing on my belt serves a purpose. Gotcha. So that's how I justify what I have on there for me and stuff like that. And yeah, it works for me. Uh, yeah. Sweet. That looks good. Let's go back to tax belt when we were rudely interrupted. <laughs> Thanks, Elliot. <laughs> he doesn't listen to this. <laughs> okay, let's go back here. All right. Um, bring it over closer. Yeah, you're good there. All right, so let's just do a rotation here and then we'll... We'll just judge here. Um, Cobra belt, I like. The pistol, good. Pistol, and what is that? Um, utility? Uh, yeah, so he's got a utility yeah. pouch here. And nothing at the back. No. Impressive. Do you, do you sit a lot? Uh, no, but I crawl around quite a bit. Backwards? Uh, I lie on my back sometimes. I okay, try to keep okay. myself. Like, um, like, if I'm trying to ambush someone and try and be sneaky, I hate lying on my front. Yep. Because that limits everything that you can do in my opinion when it comes to like trying to be mobile i like lying on my back or getting into my and into a position to where i can literally roll out and so by doing that you lessen the chance of losing something um if i were to put a dump pouch on me usually i'll put it on like a plate carrier on onto the armpit on the, the side gotcha. but usually i keep a dump pouch that only holds like maybe four or five mags because i you know i that's, don't yeah. that's probably another topic we could get into guys is a lot of people, like, you know, like, the front mm. setup for a lot of people is front heavy. Extremely and Extremely bulky. You Compa cannot crawl. Compared and then at the back, big logo, backpacks yeah. and stuff. And then, you know, and then there's people who have, like, um, like the smurf setup where mm. it's all, always on the all, side. All on the sides. I like those setups yeah. a lot. But, again, so, it makes you, like, you know. We, we could dive going. into another specific yeah. topic on that. It's just, like, ergonomics of just kit alone mm -hmm. and, and how you move. And using it, its purpose and yeah. stuff. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, like, yeah. So, me specifically, um, I used to uh, run a horizontal pouch 
on the back uh, yep. utility pouch. Um, I mostly just use that as a placeholder again. So to, let's let's see the back there again. Um, we'll just show the viewers here, like his to, his to, back uh, end. I, I mostly had the horizontal dump pouch, similar to what Max said, uh, yeah. to hold frags. So there's and, nothing uh, nothing on his back end extra there. Extra and stuff like that. So if someone uh, was out there with me and they needed something, they could always just come up right behind me while I'm covering them, and they could so take is, it out from my. Is this just pouch. a standard condor setup that you have? Uh, so what I'm rocking with this one is a st uh, shadow strategic uh, cobra belt. Uh, mm. with a, I believe it's a Condor battle belt. So it was uh, that basic belt that we saw at the very beginning. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is like a more, um, I guess, like tuned up version of it, I guess, with the Cobra buckle, like because the Cobra buckle allows uh, you let's, to... Let's turn around and see that Cobra buckle. Because I like the Cobra buckles. I'm a personal fan of it just because it's yeah. a quick release and stuff like that. You know, um, it's got a little tab on the front for you to, you know, be able to hook stuff into if you want to keep stuff uh, available at the front as well. Yeah, um, it wasn't a, like when I purchased mine, the only ones available were the mill sit. Well, not only ones available, but I stuck with it, I guess, because it, it was just nicer. It, it had the Velcro and then the belt buckle. I'm not going to lie. I do Ooh. like those ones in the sense that if I was going to make a one and done belt for like if I were to set up for like the day and I'm going to go out kind of thing, that's the kind of setup that I would have because you can rely on it not to move around. Mine is more for like set up for a pickup game kind of thing. Right? Yeah, like I could yeah quickly put it on. Yeah, I could literally just take this belt uh, with the mag already in, in my uh, rifle and I could go and have a you know, a decent round. Like, if we're going to play a long game, I wouldn't be having yeah. a belt. And right? you have the, uh, if you just turn around close to the mags there, uh, you have the uh, the same setup as your brother there, which is basically the two mags, AR mags at the back, and then pistol mags. At the, I'm guessing you guys both train the same way. Uh, it, it tends to, we kind of watch the same stuff, you know, and we kind of do the same thing. So it kind of gravitates toward that. But I just personally, myself, I like reloading my AR mags closer to my 90 or closer right to my, like, direct side. That is wow. Yeah, that, well, that's what it is, yes. right? Yeah. And for me, my pistol, like, when, I, when I'm in playing with pistols, um, I usually shrink my workspace yeah. right up to my front. And so with that, usually I have my pistol right out in front like this. So for me to have to reach behind myself to get my pistol mag when I'm in this position, I feel like is wasting extra time while I could literally just grab it from right below me yeah. and I, load it. I think, from, from again, from my coming from my background, is literally, like, AR mm. is my primary yeah. backup is always backup regardless 100%. of what like sometimes I don't even carry a spare mag yeah. for backups now right? mind you if I followed like you know a, a certain doctrine and stuff like that I probably would gravitate more towards your setup kind of thing but because I look at this more of like in a playful kind of aspect I always change things up a little bit because yeah. I'm wanting to kind of spice it up see what's different like obviously there are like when you get down to it the nitty gritty there's one way to do something because it's all based off of time kind of thing. But at the same time, though, it's been proven, right, from other people that you are fast with what you train with. So if that setup works for you and you train with that, then you will be fast with that setup. Well, exactly. I mean, I don't even know why. I, I can't even agree with the first point, right? It's exactly like if you train with what you train with, you're trained in that. Well, yeah, but you, there's also some situations right. to where it's like you wouldn't have your. I'm like, not, well, I'm not uh, going like, to tell Koi like, he's wrong for that. Well, All I'm going to say. I'm just saying as an example, that. like someone having their M4 mags on their opposite non-dominant reloading side would be completely wrong, Actually, and you didn't don't have to, anything. To on segue it. to that, what is your opinion on having the mags reversed, like upside down? Have you seen those guys? Okay, just so that, upside down, so like you know how the the clips are upside down oh, and the mags, fa like a fast mag, yeah, fast mag coming down. down. So I've seen that. I've seen guys do that, yeah. and it works. I've seen the drills for it because all it is is down and up. So yeah. if I guess what, what 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 really comes down to it for me is I do not trust some of the mag retention I systems that I have for me to <laughs> willingly try to maybe lose. I, I, a I use gas mag. mags. You know where I'm coming from. Exactly. That so. thing will just like you run. Boom, it yeah, falls off. Like, the like, weight of it get, just makes it fly. You can get some really nice stuff, like um, you know. Uh, That's why you need real fast mags, like you know, like the like. Well, the the brand fast mag. Yeah, yeah exactly. You need the fast well, mag. and you need some real yeah, so, or like a proper Kydex retention one. Well, if you yeah, get like, if you get a cheap Amazon Repro and you try to put an upside down fast cheap mag, gear, I don't want to hear complaining, right? Like that's, that's what true. It, that's yeah. what it comes down to. It's so like, that's why you go to the armor, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah well i'll definitely get you some good gear for a good price but yeah. um you know when it comes to like everyone's own personal use and everything like that it comes down to like what they want to rock and everything like that like yeah. i've got my belt set up for me but, and let's also um, keep in mind that also like body shape as well like it, me like 
I could load all that stuff in and it still fits fine because of like, you know, my, the shape of my body. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, it's not going to be the same if a skinny person wants to add the same amount of stuff. hundred percent, hundred percent. They yeah. will like, for instance, the easiest thing to describe for most people, if they don't uh, understand is like a CPC, right? If you have a full on plate carrier and stuff like that, you know, you know, you know, fat Joe over there can, only put so much of it around and then he's got all that extra molly real estate that usually hides underneath it and then you got you know skinny mason. bob over there yeah. like mason where he puts it on he's actually overlapping it <laughs> over to the other side so just... like, you know skinny people why are you making up names like, just... <laughs> i just don't want to be mean to them okay. that's like true mason. Yeah. <laughs> like mason <laughs> sorry mason sorry mason <laughs> Should have been here, Mason. <laughs> um, let's let's bring up another one. Uh, there's there there is another one there. Uh, what do we have for for another setup there that we haven't pulled up yet? Oh, yeah. um, I I just like to point out too though that so that belt this, setup. I'm not happy with yeah. it. Like I'll use it, but it's not my ideal. Setup. Gotcha. Yeah. This, this All right. So this one, H-harness. this one's an H harness. It's a little bit hard to show on video here. Mm-hmm. Just bring it over here a bit. So it's a little more fully loaded <coughs> than what you have. Yeah. So this one, um, it's a standard um, Condor um, bel- uh, battle belt. That's okay. what they call it. Yeah. Um, this one's configured to have two, four, six, eight. M4, I think those are triple mags too. Oh, really? Yeah, those are triple it's, mags. It's rare to see an actual working triple. I'm not going to lie. I see, yeah. a lot of, I see a lot of companies that. But brand th- it these, as a are, these are also AK ones as well, right? So they're doubles. They're, they're double no, for no. M4. So the triple a, for M4 it, for yeah. double for AKs. Exactly. If it's an AK double, but, it can hold three M4s. But if you have like weird ass mags, Two right? EPMs. These these, <laughs> bas- yeah. these basically hold what you need. You um, got a G36 mag? The, the, reason, the reason the user wanted a, um, a H harness mm. on this is because uh, the, the person that uses has no hips. Or, no, sorry, it has no like has like yeah, it has no hips and it just if you has put the belt ti- on, has a tiny waist and nothing. Yeah, to it'll sit just on drop it. right, right away. Okay. So, right. so that the ace, no, not no, not Tim. I'll, I'll I'll leave it unnamed. But um, yeah, this this one will just drop straight through, and then you, yeah, you can't hold it up with with just the waist alone. Plus the weight of it, like. This is this is sort of a variation of the battle belt and then a, a mm-hmm. suspender basically. Well, essentially, I'm starting to see now we're starting to get into more fully kitted gear as we're yeah. progressing through these uh, belts here. Yeah. So for this setup, you can you can crawl and you can have like nothing on your chest basically. Okay. Um, there is like a small little pouch at the back for like a backpack and stuff, but that's like, uh, you know, it's not a dump pouch. There's a dump pouch at the back. Let's just rotate around on this. Okay, so it does have the capability of sort of expanding its. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a dump pouch right there, and that's that's basically it. That's the user mm-hmm. just wants a lot of mags without having to carry stuff at the chest right. level. Okay. And it's suspended by the H harness, mm-hmm. which so su- it's supports. So distributed through yeah. your body. Okay. So this this is another variation of like. It's almost like a Russian Smirch at this point, honestly. I was honestly. just going to say, like, it, it looks very close to the Smirch that I yeah. have. Yeah. Um, what's your guys' comment on this? Because this is this is, this is is built for someone who didn't want to use a plate carrier. Yeah. Who didn't want to add stuff to the chest, but wanted to carry everything loaded at mm. the hip area. Which... Well, so my opinion on this is, like, for someone who tells me that they want to be able to have the carrying capacity uh, for mags and stuff like that, but then they flat out tell me that, oh, I don't want to wear a rig or I don't want to wear a chest rig. Well, then right off the bat, your only other option would be a belt or an H harness yep. because you're not going to you know, attain that sort of uh, mag capacity, at least, or carrying capacity in any other fashion without you know, having some sort of equipment. Right? Mo molly, mo problems. Exactly. <laughs> so you know what this reminds me of is the Smirsh, yes. Mm-hmm. But it also reminds me of an older system. You guys know what it is? The Alice system. The old Alice the, system. Like the uh, the classic, still... classic Vietnam um, like belt and then with the oh, H-harness. The don't, don't we have webbing? some guys still rocking that to this we day? We do, we do. There's I a mean, couple of non-impressionists or impressionists yeah. that come here. But yeah. if you think about it, if you just go to like, I don't know, Wesley's or whatever, their, their Paul's whatever mm-hmm. hobby store, whatever it is now, you can't go there because of the new West Fire, by the way. Oh, I'm, yeah, I heard That's about unfortunate, this. unfortunate because they're close to it. What a um, shame. They, uh, they, they have a whole bunch of like, uh, what do you call it? surplus of mm-hmm. Alice, like American oh. Alice systems mm-hmm. even. Um, even This even reminds me of the Canadian one as well. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, mm-hmm. just like less padding and more just like straight up like belt, you know, harness. And then, you know, mags that you can put in, right? Um, this one has more mag capacity than all of those. 
Well, from my experience, a lot of the vests, chest rigs, and stuff like that seem to be able to hide a lot more real estate just because it's part of the entire system. Sorry. Yeah. Well, with the plate carriers and whatnot, you have yeah. to have the plate carrier first, then you add on the other stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it, but that's not always true, okay? Because, like, if, okay, so, like, just right off the bat for you guys if i were to take this right now right and change it to what i want like you already said it it's a harness battle belt system i would take off the pouches that you have here and i would set it up the exact same way i have it on my belt i would even keep the suspenders because that would help for added weight distribution yeah. and then i'd throw a play carrier on so why would you change it with your mix well, that's what I'm saying. Like, no, no, he wants it. he wants the fast mag. I, I understand that, yeah, but why? But why though? Because um, you could essentially set this up in a fast capacity. The only difference no, would be not that you all. don't have a retention system. Not at all. How could you set this up to be a fast? Like you have Velcro. You would, you, you would have the you, you mags. Would have, you would have the mag pouch open, and you would slip the thing right behind the. So mags. where's the retention? The mag pouch. Where's the retention? The mag pouch. How is it? retain it's not well you have the velcro off so what's holding your mags yeah but it's a fast mag now it's a, it a easily it's an easily accessible magazine so i'm asking you what's holding it though you just told me you took you off have, the retention you have system. other mags in there so what happens when you take one mag out? we have a difference of opinion on this <laughs> <laughs> so your chair. mags are gonna fall chair chair well, i'm just saying that in throwing the chair guys. So your mags are gonna fall out all I, right so what i said was i would set that up like I have my belt and keep the suspenders and throw a play carrier on. Thank you. Goodbye. We can challenge. What is your, a, we can no, there's no challenge day. on it. I was talking about what I thought. How, and then, I'm just saying that I have never seen you personally run with these magazine. Uh, like yeah, because pouches. I don't like them. I, I don't you, like no, 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 them. Again, I've never seen you run them. What do you mean? They're I on have, my chest rig. I have run these before, and I have run it in that fashion, and I have not had a magazine. This style out. is on my Tasmanian rig. I have Velcro double stack M4 pouches. It's not in this style, though. How? It is a Velcro flap. No, but I'm... There is no I'm, way to tap the open Velcro. I'm telling you that this specific pouch I have run, and I have not had magazine. What, your Smurf style thing? No, these physical pouches. I'm not talking what are you getting hung up on the pouches for? I'm talking because about the damn Velcro. Because, yeah, because you're telling me that it's not going to hold the mag. It's not. You just told me that if you I took one mag out, experience. then there would not be... You, so, you, so you close the flap after that? No, I'm just saying that I have not had them fall out on me. But so did you I take not, a mag so, out? So I wouldn't change it. Yes, I have. Oh my gosh, guys. All right, well... Yo, this is hurting my head too, man. No, you're, you guys are hurting my head. <laughs> Um, was that the last uh, belt that we have yeah, there? Yeah, that was it. That was okay, we, so that this was is it for examples. Yeah, the, I, I, the reason I brought that example out is because of the fact that it it reminds me of a lot. Like this is moving away from being a first line belt, more of a um like a rig that you What's put your on kit at that. Setup point. Now, yeah, man, that, that, that that's kit. your main kit at that point. Yeah. So, like, I think the evolution of gear switched up to like having plates on you now to having like back then you didn't really have any plates. No, they like, usually put on a frag vest or yeah, they put on they a frag add, vest. Yeah, yeah. They, like it was definitely. But now, but now it's, it's had webbing systems. Yeah, That's everyone had the webbing system to go on top of it. Right? Well, as, as I've seen, like things progress and stuff like that, things are becoming more all in one, all encompassing, yeah. and more customizable. While before everything had you its think own competition purpose. shooting has something to do with just having the first line set up then? Mm. No. Uh, I, I yeah. would, I, I would well, think I, I, it I is. Again, it, it has a small influence. Well, again, it comes down to what I was saying, like, at least in my opinion, earlier, where it's like it's the basic. Like if you were to come down to like a beginning for everyone kind of thing, the belt yeah. would be the a good place to start for anyone. Competition shooters, you know, just regular, you know, pastime shooters, tactical shooters, you know. Yeah, but the, that's where it comes down to the fact that there's a pretty big difference between speed shooting and com and combat shooting. Right, so combat shooting is going off of, uh, like, you know, um, I mean, principles of efficiency and um, practicality of use, right? Whereas um, uh, speed shooting is just going off a of streamlined and speed. Yeah, I mean, they what have to like incorporate. They have to incorporate the reloads too. So that's why when you no, see I them, mean, yeah. I, I said like I'm saying, yeah, reloads like, can be like I feel like, similar. like they're both similar in the same thing. They're just applied differently. Like, I don't see an actual difference in, like, like yeah, they might have different mag setups. Yeah, the competition shooter is going to be a lot more, like, min-maxing and fine-tuning. While with the military guys, it's just going to be something that works. 
Yeah. Right? Exactly. Like with the competition shooters, you're going to have things where they're going to be like a mag holder on a 45 degree angle. Like you're not going to see that in, you know, issued military gear because that's little nuances that get thrown out the window in combat and stuff like that. But when you're in like a focused competition shooting situation, every little bit helps, right? I know. Thanks for making yeah. my point. <laughs> you're welcome. So, in terms of like airsoft, what is like the best? Thing to get first when it comes to like building your first line or your battle belt. What should you focus on first? Should you focus well, on I, just well, a well, belt setup? Should you focus on like if you don't let let's say let's let's put Mason in there first, right? Like his body type, right? Well, he, he's scenario, he's, he's you skinny. Have a gun already? Yeah. You already have a gun already in this situation. You have a gun. You have a pistol. You have a pistol. You yeah. don't have an AR. You have a pistol, you have an AR. You have both. You have then both. And my first thing would be to tell that person, because I'm a person about having fun on the weekend, to get just an M, like M, double M4 mag pouch and a double pistol pouch. And then they can at least play and have fun. If they want to do more after that, you know, all the power to them, right? What about for you there, mm, Mac? Well, I mean, pretty similar. I'm not going to tell anyone how to do what they need to, but... Um... Yes, you will. No. Okay. Um, I mean, it comes down to what's comfortable and what's practical for them and everything like that. Like I explained already on my belt, like I've, I've cut down a lot of things on my belt that I felt that weren't serving a purpose anymore. And now I have it to everything on my belt serves a purpose so it's there for a reason there are some little things that i'll change here and there and stuff like i've got a few things that i'm planning to change on it right now but um yeah if i have any advice for uh, people starting out and everything like that and um they're trying to get their belt set up in a way that they want so first i guess would for me to uh ask them is you know are they relying on it as a fail safe secondary kind of thing or are they going to kind of use it as like a main platform um if you're using it as a main platform to build off of that then obviously you want to have uh you know a high ammo count or something like that something that you can build off of in that sense um if it's just like a fail safe response kind of thing then exactly it's just like uh you know the bare essentials that you need there to have a uh you know a minimum like a level one like you know passive retention holster or something maybe even a level two and if you if you want to get in there level three if you're crazy so for those who don't know what you're talking about level one level two and level three those are just like your pistol um, uh, that, yeah, sorry. That's the uh, the levels of retention on a holster. So, on your pistol holster, yes. Yeah, so a level one holster is like your just, just typical. So, so it's to, just a tight To encompass here, level zero is guns on your hand. Gun, gun, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Or on your pocket. Zero on your pocket. Glock it in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. Glock it in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Level one is just uh, one paddle away. Yeah, well, level one is just like a retention, like passive retention. So it's I like just a tight it fitting. Just hold, it just holds it. Well, it's tight fitting Kydex or or or. No, yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. I would say even a universal holster would still be considered a, a level one. Yeah. Oh, like one. With like the, one yeah, with yeah, one yeah. with the Velcro, yeah, just like exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, don't yeah. don't buy those guys. No, no, yeah. Please, don't your don't gun buy. will go missing or your mag will I go never missing. Never tell anyone to buy a soft yeah. shell holster. Yeah. I don't always go hard shell holster. Always go hard shell holster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, from there, it would just be kind of like, uh, what kind of holster are you rocking? Like for me, I've got a cheap uh, Airsoft SciTac holster. And I've, yep, had same. That, I've had that for about three years. Get and it from Trigger Guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cheap to replace. Yeah, yeah right. easy, easy to fix. Easily available. Easy and, to fix. Um, they, you can also buy like certain parts mm -hmm. that sort of look like them, um, some off brands and stuff like that, and they still work. So it's yeah. easy to get. And so I am waiting on some other holsters that are coming right now because I finally got around to the point where I want to change it. But um, so that's what I've had for uh, a number of years, and I've used it, and I like it, and it works for me, and that's the way that I run my stuff right so. gotcha so you, you you guys just run off your secondary um when you're building your belt setup i'm guessing uh well i run my so like the way i would describe my belt setup is that i run my belt as my main reloading platform so all my reloads are done from my belt so yeah. a lot of 
action happens from my belt. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first line. Exactly. So in a situation where I've already run through my first two f uh, fast mag reloads, um, in a situation where I have time, I'll be re-indexing from oh, my chest. Yeah. Or and then my side back to your back in there because yeah. my most natural reload position is from my hip. Yeah. So that's, no, I that's I get you. Yeah, I I, I, I have the same situation too. I build mine off of my yeah. AR platform right exactly. away. If I'm using an AK, I'm using a Smirsh yeah. right away. Mm -hmm. I am not building a fast setup for an AK. Um, come by to me if yeah. you have a fast AK setup Dude, because that'll be do, cool. I would love to see that. I'm not yeah, gonna lie. Yeah, because I like, haven't seen anybody build a fast AK setup. I, I've only seen them online, like yeah. from like uh, military training videos. But like, I think it's just more... harder for us to get all their gear. Yeah, like, yeah. like how it's molded to an AK, right? Exactly. But for me, it's AR right away. That mm -hmm. is my main platform, so that's why you see the mags. You guys shift it to the back. I shift it to the front. Mm -hmm. Right, and my pistol's not that important, mm. right? I don't practice as much, mm. but I practice with an AR consistently fast reloads, mm. right? And then when I'm when when I'm down to like zero mags in there, then I'll you know hide somewhere, you know, with my AR with still a fresh mag in there, and then re-index two more mags in there, exactly. you know, from my chest. Yeah. But most of the time, I don't even run a like something, a chest rig anymore. In well, chest, yeah. yeah, because I, I I like to run the two mags here, third mag here, and out of my pocket. <laughs> Well, is literally it, the two it, extra mags. And when exactly from that point too. So like by doing it that way, you can eliminate that uh, load bearing equipment uh, off of yourself. So let's say you know it comes to the summer months, right? You've you know you still are able to play because you still reload from the belt. So you know maybe you add an extra pouch to the side or in that utility pouch you throw in a couple extra mags. So when you have downtime, you can re-index or whatever it is, right? But yeah, that's definitely like how I've set mine up. So what we're saying here, guys, is like build it to how you play and build it to how you run. Build I it to you. Yeah. Run an AR more often. You guys use your first line as your like like your pistol and then as your pistol reloads, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So like two different camps here, right? So however you want to run it. Um whether you're still running a plate carrier or not, Again, that builds to like how you reload from your plate care, how you mm -hmm. reload from your first line. Exactly. And as well as like a dump pouch, yeah. even, right? Well, it's reactionary too, right? I mean, to throw that in there, I think, I don't know if that got forgotten, but it's just like um, if you run dry or if you have stoppage or a jam or a misfire or whatever, battery dead, you know, airsoft, no air, whatever, right? It's faster for me to go to that secondary and have it reliable than for me to try and fix my long gun and possibly in the game sense die right mm -hmm. like um and just like it goes back to call of duty tutorials right it's faster to change to your secondary than it is to try and reload right so, yeah. exactly like, Yo, like not me the, i'd rather the, reload the, honestly the, 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 so like and so i've got my gun always slung or, or most of the time i have my gun slung on me so if i were to run into that problem i can within a half a second drop my gun and have my pistol out and take care of yeah, anything and, and then i can go back and fix my long gun right after i've dealt with whatever situation that is at so hand. both of you run slings yes 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 i, I do. don't yeah no you don't see yeah. so see I there's a difference it. right if i'm if i'm gonna draw hmm. right it's gonna be draw to a pistol i'm carrying that ar and then drawing with one hand there are times though because um i own more than one gun so um like with my ar i have it slung um but if i'm rocking let's say my g36 or whatever it is yeah um, does usually, it work uh, it works yes um <laughs> if i'm not uh slinging that one up uh usually because it's so wait small, you carry two primaries no Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying that if I'm out just with the G36. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I've tried that once before. It was, it was not fun, actually. It was not fun. Actually, but, come by to us if you do run two, two, yeah, two primaries. That'll people, be hilarious. A people who run well, them. a giant doesn't count because he's so big. What? Oh, the ARP? Yeah, the that's ARP. A pistol. Yeah, it's a pistol. That's a pistol hands. on him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, Sharp runs an ARP. That is well, true. I mean, actually. he's a big guy, too, though. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, he, that's another one. Yeah, Sharp puts that on his leg. And yeah, that's another like, one. Just so like, just like giant, and it looks, yeah. or no, it's on his hip. But it looks like a pistol in his hand. But it is a pistol in his hand, and then he's got that new action the army AAP pistol. So yeah. people who run secondaries, you know how they sling it on their side, but it's not. A, it's like it's like a mini um, machine gun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Or mini, machine, mini, machine, mini SMG, yeah. machine pistols. Yeah, yeah, yeah machine, machine pistols. pistols. Yeah. People building um, 
first line rigs to that yeah, like that's yeah. that's pretty awesome i've like, seen that yes yeah i've seen drop legs as well that mm. carry so freaking drop legs like, started to come back in not, fashion though not that's the thing i started I'm, seeing yeah i'm not a fan more. of drop legs either because mm. that thing will just flop yeah. around like crazy when well, i'm running i've, I've had them i feel like it I depends on it. the person yeah. like again um my buddy you know giant, giant? is yeah. a pretty big guy and he mm. makes it uh, he makes it work. Like it actually lo- works pretty well on him, just because of the way I guess the real estate the works on him. Amount of real estate, yeah. But like, yeah. yeah no, leg, if you put a drop leg on me, it's gonna be ten. on my knee. Well, the, the well, yeah, well, six, so ten. that's exactly mm-hmm. it. The drop leg on him is like up onto his mid thigh, while for me it would literally be down closer to my yeah, knee. To so, my knee. <laughs> like when you're running around and stuff like that, center. Gravity and he probably and stretches like that, that thing like... all the way out, and it's still <laughs> it's still thigh high. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure he could just attach magnetically his arm right when to that When I first leg. started, I got a drop leg pistol holster. Because it looked cool, right? Yeah. To run it off so the belt? Awesome. Biggest mistake of my life, too. Oh, so I mean, there's some people that make, like, Mason makes it work. His, his that's not, not, that, that is that, not that's a drop leg. It's a mid rise, yes, but it's, it's 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 I still consider it a drop leg. No, I don't know. No, 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 no. you shouldn't. Though, it would be it would that... be mid rise with a strap. No, yeah. it's a mid ride with yeah. It's, with, exactly. So what do you it's consider a, a drop leg? Is it just on your thigh or yeah, is it still on your belt? A uh, drop leg is still is a separate platform. Yeah, it's a separate platform. So okay. it's like uh, like on yours, you had that extra buckle yep. on there. So yours physically has to be attached to your belt, yep. and then it drops down to mid thigh or mm. something like that. While with a mid rise one, it's li- still attached to your belt, but it's dropped down a little bit lower so that you still have that ease, so that you're not chicken winging all the way up here. No, it's for the guys with the longer arms. Man. Yeah, <laughs> no, that and that's that's why I make a point. And um, the strap, all the yeah. strap is, is because uh, when you when you put if you rock a mid ride and you have a t- like depending on what holster you have because um so for what mason's got he's got a uh, t-rex arms ragnarok holster which is a passive retention holster but it, yeah. it's pretty tight so you got to really yank on it to pull it out when you do that with a safari land mid ride um it tends to kind of flex mm. and not want to come out so the thigh straps there to kind of just kind of so what you're back. saying what you guys are saying is yeah you're you're building it off of your secondary like how it comes out mm-hmm. at that point and i get what you're saying is like yeah if you have a drop leg you got long lanky arms right yeah. that's 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 what i usually tell people is like for me this works like right on the hip it works because yeah. i i have short arms yeah like right for some people that is a reach mm-hmm. and a half already exactly. for them that's for them the they could just grab their thigh right away and then like yeah i could see the mid-rise became popular just because of the yeah. fact that it fits a lot well, more and the, the average pla- person okay so with a so my problem with it like because i'm 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 a pretty tall guy. Like, You're a tall you know, guy. Don't yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm not giant tall, but I'm tall. Yeah, but yeah, but that's <laughs> giant. You're tall. Well, he's six ten. I'm like so six he's, feet. He's so giant, like, still right? taller than me. I'm sorry, guys. Get out of here. <laughs> so that's okay. I rocked a drop leg pa- platform for a while when I first started, and I had it um, as a separate platform that attached to my belt and everything like that. And what I couldn't handle was the amount of having it as a separate platform no matter how much i tightened it and tried to cinch it to my leg it would come loose and would flop around and then another thing from that too is the fact that you have a separate platform on your leg so now all of a sudden you're going into prone or you're crawling around mm. or anything like that you're bending over bending around and it's digging into you yeah and i was i just wasn't no i i got annoyed ready. with that right away when i was using a drop leg i'm like this isn't for me yeah because i've already lost a gun and yeah. i've already lost a mag <laughs> I guess my complaints with it is I just don't like the where the weight is because, yeah. um, mind you, um, you know I was rocking P two two six by Cybergun, so it was the full metal one, so it was quite heavy. Um, so having that rock around at and my, trying to find an actual holster for it. Well, no, no, no just having that <laughs> on my knee height and rocking around in the fashion, just weight distribution wise, was just really uncomfortable. No, so and, I, and I, I get really, you. It, you know, it ends up, you know, I had it on my side mm-hmm. and then it ends up at the front. At the front, yeah. yeah and exactly. I'm like, okay, I'm done with this. Well, yeah, and no matter how hard you cinch down that retention strap or whatever, it just doesn't. Yeah, it's going to cut you off. <laughs> yeah, well, you're, you're pretty much tourniqueting yourself at that so, point. So, anyways, what you, what you guys are saying is build it to your gun plat or your pistol platform as well. Yeah. Because what Mason has, he's building it off of his platform as well. And he's got the, the leg um, strap as well mm-hmm. for that one. So it, it's not moving yeah. at all for him. It it's should, a mid rise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It shouldn't move when he's pulling it out. Yeah. For me, I just build it on my hips because yeah. that is like my closest pull and yeah, I'm used well, to it. I've so, trained with it. Same with me. And it's considered a backup 
so I don't really care where it is at that point. Mm. Um, for for you guys, gun, I'm surprised you don't go to, uh, to your pistol more. No, no, I. Uh, it's because he yeah. takes care of his gas guns. Yes, so no, there you go. That doesn't mean shit. <laughs> That's okay. I could just throw the gas gun at you. Pistol runs out. I throw it at you too. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, gonna throw the gun before you, you go to your pistol, yeah. right? Like, mm. They are. Uh -huh. Yeah, but. Again, like you're building it on your platform. In yeah. this case, yours is pistol, mine is AR. I'm building it for an AR platform. I could have put more AR mags on it, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, the most important part is basically the dump pouch. Like that, I, I think that's, well, not really the most important, but like having my, because having gas mags, right? I don't want to lose their expensive, right? So yeah. having mm -hmm. it put it back into yeah. a dump pouch, that's important for me. 100%. Practice re indexing or yeah. putting it into a dump pouch. So yeah. for, for people who need dump pouches, I think carrying it on your mm -hmm. hips rather than on your, Plate carrier. I've done it on my plate carrier before. It is annoying as it's, heck. It's hard. It can get annoying. Yeah. Like when yeah. it came to gas mags, no, I had under. my belt set up differently. I had two dump pouches on either side just because when you fill up that one side, it really starts uh, making it uncomfortable. So I would yeah. try and even it out by putting so it So having that dump one. pouch, exactly. Shoot less. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> They're 30 round mags, bro. Shoot less. So for me, I have it right straight in line in my back mm. right so it's just tapping me i like to tap once in a while too yeah, yeah. from from the gas mags let you know that they're there yeah mine's offset to my left yeah so. yeah so again same premise like build it to your own mm. like body type build it to your own well needs. that's what it comes down to especially that's why i want to mention yeah. too is body type for so for like for me when i wear my belt my pistol mags are in front of me on my um in front of my head yeah exactly right? but, same but, as myself yeah. yeah and then my ar mags they end up on my 90 on my left side so like you're not crawling around a lot then are you i crawl quite a bit i mean i do but i but honestly I have never had a fear of losing anything out of my uh, out of my belt for my uh, pouches. And when it happens, uh, he's got a pretty good idea of where it fell down. Yeah. Well, most of the time it's in the heat of the moment, and it's uh, the, it's I need to practice more of that uh, inserting into the dump pouch because so many times I thought I'd hit that hole, <laughs> miss, and you miss, and you drop that mag, <laughs> and then you just keep going. You're schwacking bodies, and you're just like, wow, I lost my pistol, my 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 mag. Where'd it go? And it's I haven't like, lost an air mag. It's <laughs> in turn <laughs> and then put it back <laughs> I always make sure yeah, it goes yeah, in the you know, hole drop <laughs> oh, see, no. see, when I rocked the Connor dump pouch it was the same thing it literally like in swish around drop uh, swish because around. like I had that same problem where be, when I didn't practice with it it was literally drop insert I thought I was good <laughs> next thing yeah. I saw the rest running up behind me saying bro you're mag oh, especially yeah. for GBBR mags yeah, yeah you're, gonna, you're gonna know Pete and you know thanks to Gavin those few times that he saved my butt you know yeah, I, I have not lost the mag. I can guarantee you that. I've not, I've, I've not lost the mag. Pistol mags, maybe, but mm. not AR mags. I've lost quite a few Mark 23 mags from soft shell holsters. That's I've, why I don't like soft shell holsters anymore. I've lost tons of M4 mags. <laughs> <laughs> Reload! Yeah, and then no, I have no idea where it went. Like, I'm in the heat of the moment. Like, I gotta get this guy. I gotta do a mag flip in this yeah. heat of the moment. Thing. Where'd my mag go? I don't know. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I don't know. Terrible. Um, oh, another one. Um, what <laughs> I just realized, what goes in our utilities? Okay, uh, pull, so, pull yours up. Pull yours um, up. Let's see. Yeah. Because well, yeah, what, what goes on your utility yeah, pouch? Because like a lot of people are like rock the utility pouch, but what yeah, are those? Okay, so for myself right now, I just use my utility pouch as just a place. Is this yours, sir? Uh, yeah, this is mine. Okay, um, let's see. Let's open it up. Yeah, so what I have inside there is usually just like extra everyday stuff that I would have. So I keep a pistol harness in there for the times that if I ever go to like a large event or anything like that. Ah. Um, it is smart, in my opinion, yeah. to have some sort of uh, restraint or some sort of like lanyard in those situations. I know that it does get annoying when you draw it out and it, it turns into a whole nother mess having that so you know that's something that you could practice so you got you got you got a pistol leash then yeah i got a pistol leash there for those times <laughs> that i've lost my mag like pistol i've been there done it and that's why i i, uh, I, I do not like pistol leashes well, well, it, it, yeah i'm not a fan but i only have it for those times that it, it happens and, gotcha. it's, and, it, and it has happened and, um so like typically when i'm at a normal setup I'll, i have the medium one because it's able to fit those um uh, I believe they're ten dollar uh, green gas cans. Yeah. The half can ones. Uh, so because and and because of that, I keep that in there so that I can reload my mags on gotcha. the fly in the field. As um, well. what's on mine? I don't know what's on mine. So surprise me. 
<laughs> Even it's a legit medical kit. Yeah, so that can come off easily, which is nice because I can't reach to my butt. I'm big. So just so ripping this is for it out. Someone else to use on you. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I think there's a tensor bandage in there. I don't even know. You have, you have a, your a kill rag there. Yeah, hey, bring it over here so you can see it. Yeah. Just, just take out the rig. Oh. You got like a red microfiber kill rag? Yeah, that also acts as my, uh, my little um, microfiber to clean up my gloss too. Mm-hmm. And then, and then the first aid kit. Yeah. yeah. A little level one trek kit. Yeah. That's nice. And then I think that's it. I used to, I think my multi tool's in there somewhere, but. Definitely looks like you can have a much more fully loaded. Yeah. Uh, this is a legit yeah. iPad pouch. Yeah. So for me, it's like, right. I, I used to carry my tensor bandage in there too for uh, when I break my ankle. <laughs> and so and so I can often. tell you it's been reused. Oh, yeah. So often. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah. And uh, oh, also carabiners. Mm hmm. Add carabiners to your kit too if you want to carry like your gloves. Have a quick, uh, release yeah. So kind of thing. yeah, like a like a like a carabiner or mm-hmm. a, a grimlock. It, or I have grimlocks at the front of my rig. Even those uh, certain situations for guys who don't like running slings, I've seen a couple guys actually rock a carabiner on their chest rig or their yeah. carrier, and they'll just clip it right on there for those times that they just want to walk. Yeah, around. yeah. All right, what's in your <laughs> pocket? <laughs> It better be good. Hold on. Let's see. That's it? Yeah. It's just, it's like my grenade pouch. Like you were saying. Oh, it's a grenade pouch. Gotcha. To carry his frags. Ah, uh, only one? Uh, but sometimes. He's lost too many. <laughs> so. It's not that I lose them. People just take them. So and don't what is them. your advice for carrying stuff at the field when it comes to like your first line? I mean, for me, it's like the mini first aid. <laughs> Like, well, um, so I used to have a first aid pouch here. I yeah. just I just haven't put it. Like here at the field, I used like Mac was saying, I used to carry a first aid, but like we got so many medics here, that's well, the problem. Exactly. Situations I don't are need pretty it. much you know covered r- very well here. So most of the time, I use my utility pouches for extra BBs. But then you run into the tactical Morocco situation. So most of the time, it's just tax snacks and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. It's not we're not seriously in war here or no, anything like that. No, but like you know, again, you know, sometimes you you'll want to keep stuff like for guys who run CO two pistols. That's a great option to keep your extra cartridges because uh, it's really hard to keep those, you know, organized yeah. on you. And stuff I, like I, I, I think we don't have to dive in depth into this because there are people out there that have YouTube accounts and YouTube videos on what, what to, to put, put in and what to on in there. Like one of them is going to be a tourniquet for sure. 100%, 100%. <laughs> I have one, but yeah. I don't put it in there. Well, I mean, it's no use. I turn in a different pocket. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... I think tax snack is the way to go for, that, yeah, for, for airsoft. For, for airsoft, tax snack is the hundred percent. Saturday, Sunday skirmish. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Throw a rice crips here and there. Right. Or, the, roll up, or you even know. photo of a loved one if you just make sure you get your cardio you know, in though. Exactly. <laughs> Keep work on your fitness. Um, I think that pretty much. Uh, do we have anything else that we want to add to this? I think that really kind of wraps uh, well, up things. Because um, without diving into, like... Well, look, other look. than getting into different topics, um, well, yeah, specifically, and don't. And, you know, getting into specific details and stuff like that, I think we've covered this topic pretty well. Um, Actually, I want to hear what the audience has to say. What would you put in your tactical pouch on your first? Yeah, oh, yeah. What would you guys carry in a utility no, pouch? On your what battle belt. Would. What do? What do you carry? I see you guys out there with all these pouches. I want to know what's in the what's pouch. Okay, what I want you guys to do is go to Mac Attack, the Armory Store, lay out your first line or your battle belt, open her up, and be like, look what is in here. <laughs> After 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Not during business hours. I don't know. If they make it this far in the podcast, I'll give them like 5% off or something. <laughs> there you go, guys. Well, they're holding... You to that word. I'm not. <laughs> that's, that's okay. They won't know who's who. <laughs> All right. I think that is it for battle belts. Um, we have some interesting setups for all of us. Um, we have different sort of varying uses for battle belts. Um, also spanning almost different generations um, of battle belts. Um, mainly a lot of newer stuff. My, my stuff is from the old days, but... Mm-hmm. Still works. Um, same standard stuff. Yeah. I mean, the general concept is still the same. So. Yeah. Well, yeah. before the Kydex stuff, I was using the bungee 
retention holster or bungee uh, the, tacos. Yeah, the tacos the tacos yeah, the taco pouches. you know it gets me hungry every time i uh, talk about someone's taco mags <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so for mine is uh, a lot of it is uh, high speed um, HSGI, HSGI stuff. Yeah. HSGI stuff, expensive. Yes, very but expensive. It's been eight years. Mm-hmm. I so. do like their double, uh, like some peop- some. Yeah, the double, them, the yeah, double AR mags. They call them like compressor pouches or whatever yeah. it is, but like I don't know. I I, I like those ones because uh, you can have them double stacked on like a yeah. plate carrier at the front, and when you don't have them anymore, they're pretty much as low. Yeah, I mean, regardless of what we have. I think the end goal for the end user is basically figure out what works for them. Yeah. And then whatever is available at that time and, and purchase. From it. Yeah. And then train from it. And I'm sure you guys in your store have a lot of attachments for it as well. well yeah, especially Molly. That's a standard nowadays. So Molly is standard. Molly. Mo Molly. Mo problems. <laughs> All right. I think that ends it right here. Um, if you guys are watching this on Friday, there is a night game tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, ASG Airsoft Strike Group. Yes, they're running a night game tonight. Um, I'm probably gonna be there to uh, use my night vision. We'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, come join them. You don't need night vision. You just need a flashlight. Yeah, just have a flashlight. Are, have are you guys joining in as well? Unfortunately, we're gonna be busy with other things. We really like to be out there with everyone, but uh, not this weekend. Damn. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, though, in other news, uh, before we end off, um, I would like to. Uh, tease everyone who's made it to the end of this podcast here. I'm sure some of you guys have uh, kept your eyes open and probably seen the uh, Facebook page, but recently a new group has started uh, coming by. Uh, Camp X exactly. 103. Yes. Um, so if, uh, Poi, would you like to give a little more details on that? So we just discussed about it briefly at the very beginning here, but Camp X 103 is basically going to be a group of i can't really divulge into it too much but it is a group of special forces folks um that are running training events at panther um they're going to be specifically training for law enforcement for you know military guys mm. um and as well as for airsofters here they um security they, they have yes. it open for everybody yes. um again as long as um whatever it is they're running um whatever it is they're gonna do they're, it's gonna be paid um training from special forces guys um we know one of them which is jeff and he's a jtf2 sniper Mm -hmm. and uh, he's he's been deployed to afghanistan yeah before so exactly and just so that everyone's aware this um thing that's happening at panther they're offering uh two trial runs uh for free for people first come first serve or uh no you have to first come first serve on messaging them over their facebook page yeah that's it's already too late for this weekend yeah well for if you're hearing this now you're the first one's booked up so maybe you can catch the next one who knows this is a freebie so but um they're gonna have future courses the teaser ones are just what we requested for so that you know everyone understands like what level you know our people here at at Mm -hmm. the field but I'm sure they're going to start getting law enforcement folks and as well as, like, you know, military folks as well that are interested. Um, yeah, it's great time to be a Panther, I guess. Definitely a lot of things happening at Panther. You guys obviously heard, you know, podcast before and then the podcast before that. There are other guys also creating Running training, survival uh, events or yeah. survival training exactly. and as well as, like, squad training, yeah. you know, so fire team uh, training, specifically guys, for airsoft. Exactly. So if you guys are, you know, maybe interested in going to a Milsom, you know, you got a couple of your friends and stuff like that, now's the time to make that Milsom group. Now's the time to start, you know, possibly running uh, events together or, you know, doing a little training with each other so that you guys can have that extra step at that next event so you're a little more prepared. Yeah. So hopefully the next Milsom event from... Airsoft Strike Group, a- ASG now. Um, you know, we have some trained up guys that'll go in there and just are, are prepared. I'm excited for the next one. Are you excited for the next one? You guys are just going to be RPing, though. It's different. I'm going to be leading a squad. What are you talking about, man? RPing? What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are so in the zone. <laughs> I would like a return of some of your characters. Uh, maybe two of them. Uh, unfortunately, the other two were killed. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Rules of engagement, guys. Just respawn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that ends our segment here. Um, anyone want to do a closing statement? Someone that's not me. Okay, well, for anyone who's made it to the very end here, uh, the Armory does have a special on T-shirts. 
um, right now. So if you guys are interested, you know, pop by the store, uh, give a little uh, inquiry, and uh, we'll be able to give you guys a hand with that. Should we start selling our own shirts now? Panther airsoft floor. Just literally a table. Can we just have, we just a, have table. Like a table that's like cracked in half with like camera equipment on top of it? P A F T T. Yeah, exactly. Where what do you think? What do you in, think? But it's I, 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 I Comment down below as well, guys, if you want some of that shirt merch because we, we can do it. It's just that, you know, we just need people Panther. buying. Well, hey, there hasn't been any Panther airsoft merch in a long time. So. Who knows? Elliot's not watching this. We know. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He's. He just caught on. He's. He's tuned in right this second. You see, he just tuned in right now. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot has joined the chat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that is it. This is your host, Poi. Uh, we got Mac. Sorry, Tac. It's all right. It's Tac. <laughs> and we got Mac. <laughs> and I'm Mac. <laughs> we'll catch you guys next time yep. on the next episode of Panther Airsoft Bowling Table Talk. See you guys. Bye-bye.